My name is Rolf, and I will be telling you something about the work we've been doing at Huawei, and in particular the, K the compiler lab in Cambridge. So the thing that we want, that we in Cambridge at least want, is declarative and modular compilers. The way that we have been approaching this is by embracing both multi-level rewriting and declarative rewriting. For the first, we of course use MIR, and for the second, we use this notion of schedules. And in this talk, I will tell you something about uh, how to obtain schedules for complete lowering and optimization of MIR. And we get these schedules by composing smaller schedules written in MIR. And hopefully by the end, that will make sense. Uh, so first, you might have a question, what are schedules? So let me explain. The central thesis behind schedules is that the programs that you and I write every day actually consist of two things. There's an algorithm in there. The algorithm describes what the actual computu uh, computation is that we care about. But there's also something else in there that talks about what, how the computation happens in time and space. Space, in this case, memory. Uh, let me illustrate by this example from Halite. So Halite uh, very successfully applied the scheduling notion to the image processing domain. So they consider this algorithm that you see on the left here uh, which is just applying a blur to some image buffers. And they say, when we actually write the program, then it will look something like this on the right. We, and don't care about the particulars here. It's just that we have dealt with loads of details, like saying which loops are going to be parallel, where we're going to use synth instructions, where allocations happen, uh, all that. And if we then apply this scheduling notion, we get something like this. The user would actually just care about writing the high level, uh, the user can get away with just writing the high level algorithm, the thing that you see at the top left in blue. And they would also write a schedule. The schedule would then describe the kind of lowering that you want, the kind of optimization that you want. So here, the schedule described things like what, what loops should be uh, tiled, what loops should be factorized, which loops should be interchanged, which paralyzed, all that. And then there's some machinery that we give both the algorithm and the schedule, and that machinery can then uh, produce the optimized code for us. And for Halite, I showed that they can get the very high performance code and with relatively little effort, because this is much easier to understand and much easier to iterate on. It's much easier to change the schedule and get some other program with other characteristics. Uh, given the success from ha of Halite, this notion of schedules has been applied to many other, uh, well, to some other domains, and in particular, it has had a bit of success in applying it to optimizing BLAST and tensor programs. Here we see an example from TVM, where they apply some tiling to, some, uh, to a MAFMO. The details do not matter too much. It's just the point that's very high level. And there have been a number of other uh, scheduling languages as well in, the, in recent years. Here are some. All share the same main idea. Uh, they, they give you declarative descriptions of how to transform a high-level code to optimized code. You only need to deal with this high-level description of, the, of these transformations. So we can apply this idea to uh, MIR, and that gives us the transform dialect. So what is the transform dialect? Uh, MIR's transform dialect is a meta dialect. It's MIR that talks about other MIR. So we have, in particular, we have transform IR describes transformations on payload IR. Payload IR is like the MLIR that you're familiar with. So here on the left, we have, so we have a uh, gem fee, you know, which contains some uh, Linux. Again, the details don't matter too much. The main point is one of these is, a, uh, is an element-wise Linux, and the other one is not. And the, now we want to optimize this with a very high-level description. And we do that through the transform IR at the bottom. We just describe how to uh, find an, uh, how to find the element-wise Linux. In this case, we just say we want to uh, the uh, the so arc will be unified with the entire payload IR, and then within that we can apply a matching, which will search for things which have uh, iter types just one uh, one parallel dimension, so an element-wise Linux. Having found that, we can then apply tiling to it. So let's see if we again introduce that machinery that they also had in Halite. So we give the, the, the high level program, the payload IR, and this transform IR, which is essentially scheduled to this machinery, and the machinery is able to apply all the details of the tiling for us. Uh, yeah, so that's, 
Uh, that's how the transform dialect works, though in general you will come across it in this shape. We just have one MLIR file where the transform sequence is actually, the transform IR is in the same file as the payload IR. Uh, and the sequence of uh, transform IR just uh, has some matching at the top. You just select the kind of stuff in your payload IR that you know you want to transform in a specific way. Then you apply this matching, uh, you apply some optimization or some lowering to these match stops. And the transform interpreter is then just takes this one file and gives you the transformed IR. Uh, this is really uh, mostly Alex's work, and I highly recommend you watch his tutorial from last year to get familiar with it. And he's keeping the tutorials up to date up on the website uh, because last year's presentation might already is already a bit outdated. Uh, yeah, so these are good resources if you want to learn more. So what about combining these notions of schedules and the multi-level rewriting that we typically do with MIR? Uh, let's have a look. So typically with MLIR, we would want to do some progressive lowering through the dialects. Suppose we start with some programs on kernel as a TOSA program, uh, some TOSA MLIR, and then we want to lower that to Linux and gradually lower that to uh, uh, with some I want to introduce some tiling to optimize it, which brings in some lower level dialects. And then we might want to get rid of the whole Linux dialect through some factorization and on and on until we reach some dialects at the bottom. And the, the thing that we could do is we can use schedules for each of these lowering steps, for each of these optimization steps, uh, as you see here, and iteratively op uh, 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 obtain the transformed IR. Uh, the tiling we saw before, but the thing that might be a bit of, uh, might be of interest here is at the top we can also just call out to existing passes. Uh, we can do quite a lot with uh, uh, transform dialect. It can be arbitrarily fine grained, or it can be very coarse as well. Passes are quite coarse, if you ask me. Um, so we now have this pipeline, this sequence of little schedules that we're calling one after another. Couldn't we maybe compose them into one big schedule? Well, yes, we can come up with a way of obtaining large monolithic schedules. Suppose we have the pipeline here on the left. Can't we just make this into one big sequence just by concatenating these schedules? And then all we need to do is give the big schedule to the transformer interpreter and as well as the high level program. And then we get the fully optimized program at the end. Well, the transform dialect actually has some interesting semantics. I refer you to Alex, uh, but this might actually not be quite the same program. Uh, but I will now give you another argument for why this might not be that good of an idea to just concatenate these sequences like this. Um, so I will say I, I insist that composable schedule, composing schedules is a good idea, but these monolithic schedules are not, mostly because these monolithic sequences are not ideal. You need to inherently programmatically generate them. Uh, in doing so, the structure of the lowering pipeline is lost. When you start running it, it's very hard to identify where you are in your pipeline. And that means it's all harder to debug, it's harder to maintain, and you cannot easily reuse these parts of the pipeline as you would like. It's all about being modular and, and high level. Uh, and it's both about being high level, but also about being modular. So luckily, there is a, uh, the transform dialect does provide some facility for composing schedules. And it has these two ops, named sequence and include. Named sequence essentially allows us to introduce functions and, and name them. So here we have transform named sequence tile element wise. Tile element wise is just a name for this little sequence at the top. And it takes an argument and it returns something as well. And then at the bottom, we see some, some other sequence that can then make a call to tile element wise through the include op. And yeah, you can just provide an argument where, where you've maybe already done some matching before. And failures propagate is details that I refer you to Alex to. Okay, so given that we can actually compose these uh, uh, schedules now through these, these uh, include uh, and name sequence, we can start to compose, we can maintain the little schedules that we had before, but start uh, to just call them in sequence. This is essentially what the pipeline is, right? So here we have the definitions of the little, uh, of the little schedules, 
uh, coming first. And then we have the transform main, which is just like the main function of C. This is the thing that a, the transform interpreter will call all by itself. So this is, will be our entry point. Then this entry point can just start calling the little sequences, the little schedules in turn. And then we just have this pipeline notion again where we iteratively transform uh, the IR. But now in one big schedule, whilst all of the small schedules are still contained within it. Uh, okay, so uh, we uh, can write one pipeline this way. Um, and here we have yet another of these pipelines, a possible pipeline for a kernel one. Um, uh, this, this pipeline on the left here makes use of the schedules that have been defined in the middle. Uh, yeah, and then we have this one big lowering step from the high-level program to the low-level optimized program. And we can, of course, then have multiple pipelines that also make use of this small library that we have defined in the middle. In the middle. Uh, and here, this pipeline on the right is slightly different, and we can, uh, we can have some face ordering thing. We can uh, use just different optimizations. And then we could also just uh, apply this to a completely different kind of kernel. And we, again, get this big step lowering going on. Uh, something I've glossed over is that in composing the schedules, we actually use some glue, uh, namely, uh, we want to keep the little schedules as modular as possible, as simple as possible. Uh, that means we typically apply some CSE and canonicalization in between each of the uh, schedules, just because then the matching would be easier when we start matching uh, at the start of a sequence. We know we have a better idea what the IR will look like. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's it for composing. Uh, so now that we have these big schedules, does it then mean we have these big schedules like this, or maybe like this? Does it then mean that we can just do a single call to the transform dialect and have it do all of the work for us? We just have a big description, high level description of what the transformation should look like. Can the interpreter now do everything? Yes, essentially, yes. Uh, so we have a schedule-based MIR compiler. And we used MIR's Python bindings to generate schedules for each of the lowering uh, and optimization steps, the stepwise schedules that you saw. Uh, we generate these programmatically because they, these little schedules have attributes, they have parameters, and they need to be set appropriately. Ask me about it later if this is of interest. Um, we mostly use upstream transform ops, dot no, dot not, though not entirely. We programmatically generate the main sequence for each pipeline that we have. And these pipelines do uh, indeed do this whole lowering from high level dialects to low level dialects in one big step. And we delegate the running of pipelines fully to the transform interpreter by invoking just one pass. So now just to argue for actually that reuse actually takes place actually is of use. We, have, we use this compiler in support of a Plus-like library. In this, in this library, we, for this library, we have, we have about 19 distinct pipelines, uh, which go out to 20, uh, 26 different of these smaller schedules. And about 15 of these uh, smaller schedules, uh, about 15 of these smaller schedules are used in more than 10 pipelines. So there's quite some reuse here. Uh, and there's some common suffix as well. Around 80% of the schedules that we use have at most seven transform ops. So each of the sequences itself is also relatively easy, is it relatively simple. So all of the schedule, the small schedules by themselves are easy to understand. And the longest main sequence that we have, uh, well, there are a couple over 11 transform ops, but not that many. Uh, yeah, so these are also relatively easy to keep in mind. So in summary, uh, schedules allow for declarative descriptions of lowering optimization. It's the transform dialect that allows us to do this inside MLR. Uh, by writing small schedules, we can keep our compiler modular, and these, mo uh, these small schedules then facilitate reuse and maintainability. And we can compose schedules for entire pipelines and then have the transform interpreter do the actual work of the transformations. And here are some ideas for questions. That's it. <laughs> Any questions? Hi.
Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, I noticed in the examples you gave that the composed schedules are essentially functions that take modules and return other modules. Have you explored different degrees of granularity, um, perhaps operating on individual functions or even operating on individual operations? Uh, yes. So I guess what you're saying, can we have very detailed small schedules that are applicable to very specific parts of the IR? Uh, yeah, for instance, like two linear algebra ops that you want to tile in different ways. Yes. So what I'm showing you now is basically just one big uh, linear thing that calls out to just uh, one small schedule. And that's the only call graph that you have, right? There's only one call going that way. But you can have that the main pipeline calls out to some schedule. That thing calls out to a smaller schedule that does something very specific and then goes back uh, to the, the, the schedule that the main schedule called, and it does something further before continuing to get the other, the, the next stepwise transformation, the bigger step. Uh, yeah, so you can do arbitrarily detailed stuff, and you can also make the schedules much smaller and compose the schedules itself. Uh, Thanks. Cool. Anyone else? And uh, <clears throat> you, you have to be careful because the uh, scheduler match will match any operation that you that is in the graph. Yes. So if you match like a, a matmol, it's going to match all of the matmols. It's going to transform in the same way all of the matmols. So if you want like tiling two different two matmols in two different ways, you're going to have to be very specific on how you match them, because if they look the same for your transform matcher, then you're going to transform them in the same way. So when the second match tries to match is not there anymore because it's not a map model anymore, right? So you have to be very careful on, on how you talk about operations and yep. et cetera to, to, to make sure that you get the, the transform. Yeah, so right. the, the matching needs to be as precise as you need it to be, but it can be very precise. So the matching language is not ideal as it is, but it can be quite precise. Yeah. And it sh the, the, the transform dialect should be updated so it's as precise as possible. Yeah. You can do, uh, can be as precise as possible. Great, let's thank the speaker again.